traders here. This is Chris Capri with SecondSkiesForex.com. So today's video is on a price action trade that I took on a five minute chart on gold. I actually published this trade on my website showing the actual chart from my broker here, which shows the entry and exit arrows right here, where I got in, where I got out. And I just want to break it down, what I was looking at, what I was seeing, why I made the trade, stop limit. Uh, very simply, just kind of break this down and show you how I can trade price action the same on a five minute chart as I am on a one hour foreign daily chart. Now, as you all know that if many of you have read my articles, I'm generally looking to trade with trend as much as possible. I will trade counter trend when there's opportunities, but if I take 10 trades on a particular day, seven of those are gonna be with trend. And the general model I'm looking at is for an impulsive move to be followed by a corrective move. And then I'm usually anticipating that the next impulsive move will be in the same direction as the original impulsive move. And this plays itself out until it runs into a counter trend impulsive move or I get a very strong counter trend price action signal that's really communicating to me that this move is over and I want to start looking for counter trend plays or consolidation corrections after that. So with that being said, when I see, one thing I like to break down is when I th see an impulsive move stop, I usually like to mark that level because that is going to, we have to ask ourselves, from an order flow perspective, why would sellers who are already in control all of a sudden just stop? It's usually one of three reasons. Either one, they've run into some counter trend buyers who are willing to defend the level. Two, maybe there's a particular announcement coming out and so the price section kind of stops waiting for the announcement to come out. Or three, that there's just some simple profit taking. Well, regardless, wherever the market has stopped after an impulsive lag, that usually becomes an interesting level. It usually becomes a level where you see a lot of price action triggers around that. And it usually is a key point where if buyers are coming in here, maybe they do think they want to push back on the market. They're usually putting their stops just below this here. So if the market does continue, it usually trips those stops and then continues a nice impulsive leg down there. But the bottom line is that usually becomes a significant level either for bulls to use this for their defense, for bears to attack and trip stops on the other side, or if the market continues on another impulsive leg, it can often become a breakout pullback area or magnetic point or gravity point where the market pulls back to and then gives you another opportunity to get in with trend. So we see that here, eventually the market breaks through and starts another impulsive leg down. Then it does the same thing, stops at a particular level, and then forms a brief consolidation, which is just a short little pen in here. And then the market sells off for four candles in a row. Now, if you look really closely, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. These four candles, this impulsive leg here, is the most unique of all of them. Why is that? Well, it does have four candles in a row, and so does this one here. This is much larger for sure. But take a look at the candle and how each candle continues on after the next. Each candle gets bigger than the next one, with the last one being the biggest, and the biggest one in this entire chart since the London Open. Now, for those of you who have read my articles on exhaustive price action and reversal bars, this is looking like an exhaustive reversal bar to me. It's the largest. We have a series of increasing bars. Generally, when selling pressure is on, or buying pressure, it doesn't matter, but when we have directional pressure and each candle is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that's usually for one of two reasons. Either in this case, the sellers who are already in the market are adding more and more to their position because they believe they have complete control of the market and they're going to drive prices farther and farther. Or people who are late to this move on the day are now chasing the trend. And so we have new sellers coming in. The combination of new sellers coming in plus the sellers are already in control. You just get a much greater amount of the market being imbalanced on the sell side. And so then generally candles get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now on a smaller time frame, on a one minute time frame, this is going to be a parabolic move. And parabolic moves generally cannot last. They usually result in an exhaustive move or a climax move. And then we see some sort of pullback. So I see this here. And although I like to be selling at this point, I'm not going to want to sell on a break here because that's chasing it after three legs down. And so I want to be looking for a pullback. Where's my most natural pullback point to? where the market stopped the last time. This is a gravity or magnet point here. And most ideal for me to get into the market would be selling here when the 20 MA gets down to this level here. If the 20 MA gets down to this level at the same time that price section gets here, then I really have a confluence of signals. So that really kind of adds to the favorability of my trade. And look what happens. So this is what I'm looking to do, the trade ideas. I want to trade with trend here 
If the exhaustive move is not too powerful, then I'm going to sell here and look for a two to one play selling here. So I'm going to look for a reward two times my target. Look what happens with the market shortly after this here. Let me just move this along just a tad here. We get five candles in a row, which is pretty interesting because we haven't had five bull candles all day since the London session. And then we make it all the way to our level again here. Now the market goes right to pretty much the level, give or take 20 cents on gold, which is nothing. That's like a pip on the euro. It gets right to my level and right to the 20 MA. So to me, this is a no-brainer at this point. This is the level I want to get in. I'm not going to be looking for a price action trigger off this level. Why? Because the level is where I want to be getting in. Price action triggers patterns such as pin bars, engulfing bars, insight bars, uh, you know, so forth. These are usually not the cause of an ensuing move. They are the result. They are a result of a particular order flow and pr a particular order flow that creates a price action off of a particular level. Now, that usually can lead to a with trend move or another type of move, but the bottom line is, is that you can't think of patterns as necessarily the cause. Sometimes they're the cause and sometimes they're the result. They are the cause if it hits off a particular level and then gives a second opportunity for traders to react to that price action trigger, maybe that pin bar, then they are the cause. But they're usually the result of order flow. So I'm looking to get in off this level, not waiting for a pattern here. Especially since we had nine candles in a row, it's pretty unlikely that the bulls are going to be able to maintain this 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 candles when the sellers have been so dominant. So what's the trade? Very simple. Put my stop about a dollar up. And I'm looking for a two to one target, which would be about here. Looking for a simple two to one target. If I felt that the selling pressure was strong, then I would probably hold out for the move to go all the way down to here because that's where the buyers came in. The sellers might give it a second attack on this level before uh, giving up. But because it was such an exhaustive move to begin with, I have a feeling they've probably taken some profit to begin with. And so what happens here? If we slowly zoom forward, now it does hit my target. And so let me tell you why I decided to exit out of my target. The first candle was actually very, very promising. And after I saw the first candle, there was a part of me that said, maybe I should go for a larger target. Why? Because the sellers clearly got in in this level here, and one candle of selling took out two candles of buying. If there were counter trend traders in here that were looking for a quick move, they've probably taken profit upon seeing the first candle to take out the last two. Either they had stops below here and here, and they said, hey, target achieved, we hit the 20 MA, that's a big goal or milestone. Boom, we're now out of the market, the sellers are back in the market. But take a look at the candles afterwards. These candles are very, very small. Compare them to the candles here. This tells me that there's no follow through selling pressure. There's very, or there's very little follow through selling pressure. There is follow through because it is candle red, 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 bear, 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 bear candle, telling me that the sellers are mildly in control. But five candles of selling is not even equal to four candles of buying. So if I was to have to weigh this in terms of a scale, who's in control? Well, the buyers were able to exert more force over these 20 minutes than the sellers were over these 25 minutes. So that tells me that there's, I'm unlikely to see some follow through down to my lower level. So I'm getting out at my exit and that's pretty much it. And here's the actual trade. Same markings you can actually see. I took this right after I made the trade here. Intraday price section pullback with trend set up here right to the 20 MA. Got out here. That's my trade simple and done. So this is a very simple setup that I've taken. This is a great way that you can use impulsive versus corrective pullbacks to take with trend moves and then find key areas where you can get into it. These nice little gravity points, these magnet points where the market will pull back to. Generally a good confluence to that signal will be the 20 MA being there at the time that you're looking to make that trade. I see these trades all the time. I see them every day. These trades happen every single day, and there are plenty of them each day. So don't feel like you're going to miss these. There, there's plenty of them out there. These happen all the time. It's a common price action setup that you can trade this, price, this breakout pullback setup. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of why I took the trade, what I did, how I managed my stop limit, entry, exit, what I was reading from a price action perspective, and that you found this valuable. So... That's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this material. Make sure to check us out. 
and check me out at secondskiesforks.com. Until then, I bid you all adieu, and good luck trading, everyone.